Hello everybody, welcome to Terraria. My name is Nisimus, and my last Terraria video, the guide on all of the items in 1.0.5, got a lot more popular than I thought it did. I mean, than I thought it was going to be. I mean, I'd have to thank the Terraria online forums for that. I mean, there's no way that video got that many views naturally, unless it's just really lucky. Alright, so, under, I guess, popular demand? Uh, people requested that I do an alchemy guide because that's one thing that I totally left out of my first guide in Terraria 1.0.5. So this video is going to show a basic um, water bottle farm that I've created along with the recipes of every potion in the game for buffs and how to get all of the ingredients. Alright, first we're going to go over my water bottle farm. Normally in order to create a water bottle you simply go underwater like this but you're losing breath. You go underwater and then craft the bottles in your inventory like that. They restore life and they're quite useful, but if you're crafting a very large amount of, bo of water bottles to create a lot of potions, uh, you don't want to drown, and it's quite likely that you are. And all you need to do is create a pool of water that submerges your body completely plus one block like this. Cover it up with a wood platform is a recommendation. A little lag here. Um, and then get a breathing reed, which you can get from water chests. Go underwater, and you can breathe out through the platform with the reed, and you can still create the bottles like that. Alright, now, in order to create a potion in, in um, Terraria, you have to take a water bottle to an alchemy station. An alchemy station is made by uh, putting any bottle onto a table. Just put an empty bottle onto a table uh, or a shelf. A shelf is a wooden platform. So yeah, just put a bottle onto a shelf or a table and then stand under it and just pretend that's a crafting bench and you can craft potions. You don't need a craft you don't need anything to craft a water bottle. You seem to be standing in water. But all right. First we're going to go over the various different types of rare plants that were added in 1.0.5. The first one is blink root. Blink root grows naturally in caves and it only gives seeds when fully grown when it's emitting pulsing light. These rare plants grow naturally in certain places but only give their seeds if under a certain condition. Normally they only give their plants, but under a certain condition they'll give their seeds. So blink root grows naturally in caves and it only gives its seeds when it's fully grown and emitting pulsing light in the cave. The next plant is daybloom. It grows naturally on regular old grass and it only gives seeds if you harvest it during the day. Quite easy, that's the easiest one. Deathweed. It grows naturally in the corruption and it only gives seeds if you're doing a blood moon. Ouch. So, a blood moon during corruption is not a good idea. Deathweed aren't hard to find, but they're pretty hard to get to considering all the eaters of souls that are everywhere. Next are fire blossoms, which are probably the hardest to get. They grow on ash blocks in the underworld area. And as hard as that is to get, a lot of people can survive the underworld, including me. But there's one problem. They only give seeds if they're submerged in lava. They're very finicky and hard to get seeds from. So you have to find one, submerge it in lava, and then harvest it. It's quite complicated. But none of but none of but the plant and the seeds itself are not harmed by lava, so that's good. And by the way, you can't plant ash blocks up on the surface and grow fire blossom. They only grow on ash blocks down at that level. You can put ash blocks down at that level and have them grow, but ash blocks up here will not grow fire blossom. Next is Moon Glow. Moon Glow grows naturally on jungle grass, but it will only give it seeds if you come at night. So, overground jungle, underground jungle, doesn't matter. Just come at night and you can harvest away and get the seeds and the plant. Now, the last plant is Water Leaf. It grows in a desert biome, oddly, and it's quite easy to find, but it only gives seeds if it's submerged in water, which is very weird. Water in a desert? Doesn't make sense, but just find a plant, uh, submerge it in water, get dig a couple, I mean, build a couple walls around it, submerge it in water, then you can harvest it. Alright, that is all the rare plants that you need. Next, I'm going to talk about the extras that you may need. Uh, if, if at any point you need any of this stuff to make the potion, this is everything you need to make all the potions. The rare plants, along with um, a water bottle, and then this stuff. You can get a lens from a demon eye, as most people know. You can get a rotten chunk from an eater of souls, as most people know. You can get a feather as har from, from harpies up in floating islands. You can get coral 
from oceans at the at the end at either end of your world. You can get shark fins from sharks. Iron ore you can get by mining iron, obviously. Fallen stars you can collect them randomly at night, as you know. Obsidian you can make water you make water collide with lava, and then it and then you can mine out the obsidian that's created, similar to how Minecraft works. Mushrooms just grow naturally on grass. Everyone sees mushrooms. Glowing mushrooms grow naturally in the cave layer underground, which a lot of people have seen. And then gold ore, you obviously have to mine some gold. And then cactus, you can simply collect in the desert. Next, I am going to show you all the different potions, tell you what they do and how you make them. An archery potion, it increases your arrow speed and damage for four minutes, and you can and you combine water, day bloom, and lens at an alchemy table. Battle potions increase your enemy spawn rate, similar to a water candle and you combine water, death weed, and rotten chunk. Featherfall potions slow your falling speed, and you have to combine water, daybloom, blink root, and feather. Gills potions make you breathe water instead of air, like a fish. And you combine water, water leaf, and coral. Gravitation potions allow you to control the gravity with the up and down keys. You combine water, fire blossom, death weed, blink root, and feather. Hunter potions show the locations of enemies by making them glow. And you combine water, day bloom, blink root, and shark fin. Invisibility potions grant you invisibility and make you harder to see by enemies. And you combine water, blink root, and moon glow. Iron skin potions increase your defense by 8. And you can make them by combining water, day bloom, and iron ore. Magic power potions increase your magic damage by 20%. And you can combine water, moon glow, death weed, and fallen stars at an at a alchemy table. Mana regeneration potions regen increase your mana regeneration similar to the bands or uh, meteor armor, etc. And you can make them by combining water, moon glow, day bloom, and fallen stars. Similar recipe except without the death weed. Night owls, like this, um, you combine water. Day bloom and blink root, and they increase your night vision. Obsidian skin potions provide immunity to lava, and you combine water, fire blossom, water leaf, and obsidian. Regenerate, regeneration potions for your health regenerate your regenerate your life, obviously, and you can make them by combining water, day bloom, and mushrooms. Shine potions emit a very large aura of light, even larger than the orb of light, and you can make them by combining water, day bloom, and glowing mushrooms. Spelunker potions show the location of treasure and ore by glowing it in rainbow colors. It's pretty cool. You can make it by combining water, blink root, moon glow, and gold ore. Getting a little FPS issues here. All right, we're back. Thorns potions. You can uh, uh, you can make them by combining water, death weed, and cactus. And any enemies that attack you also take damage. And the last potion is water walking, which does the obvious, and you can make it by combining water, water leaf, and shark's fin. Alright, so let's recap. This guide just showed you how to get all six rare plants and their seeds. It showed you all of the extras you'll need to make every potion, and where to get them. And it shows you, the, and it shows you every potion, what they do, and the exact recipe to make it. As well as a quick, simple water bottle farm that I've created. I hope you enjoyed this video, and... Please subscribe, and there'll be much, much, much more to come. Thank you.